This is a Ronnie rig. And I go so far to say it's probably the most popular pop-up presentation today, or at least for the last few years anyway. So unless you've been living under a rock, you'll have seen these, used these, or seen someone using them because they are so popular. And for good reason. They're effective, an easy pop-up presentation to tie up, they reset nicely, and you can fish them pretty much anywhere. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to tie them up really quickly, especially as we'll be using the Gemini tidy booms. So this one is a five and a half inch tidy boom. They're also available in a seven inch and a nine inch, and they come in packs of three like this. These ones are the Ronnie rigs with spinner swivel. So that's the swivel at the very end of them. But all of the tidy booms are made from the same material, 100% fluorocarbon. I think it has a refractive rate of something like 1.42, which in basic terms is the similar or pretty much exactly the same as water's refractive index. So once these are in water, they are next to invisible. The material is 30 pound braking strain. The loops either end are fused, which is far greater strength than any kind of knot you can tie. And they reset nicely. They're the perfect balance of stiffness, but still movability so that a fish come from any angle, it's still enough movement in that boom that it can go into a carp's mouth and not too rigid, but it then resets itself perfectly. And that is why there's been over a million items sold worldwide by Gemini. So how do you tie this up? Really, really simple. Start with, get the boom you chose, I'm gonna go with a five and a half inch one. I said in the previous video, which was the hinge stiff rig. If you haven't seen that one, go back and watch it. That's another pop-up presentation that's a bit higher off the deck. And I go through the sort of situations you'd use one of those. But I do like to keep my rigs fairly short. But of course, depending on what you're fishing over, whether it's slightly weedy or you just like a longer rig, that's when you choose your different lengths. Pull one of these out of the packet. They come presented really nicely and kept straight in packaging. So there's no risk of them being kinked when you get them out of the packet take off the little bits of transportation glue, which keeps them held in place. And as quick as that, we have a boom section ready to go. So no need to tie anything up. If you're an angler that likes to get going quickly, don't really enjoy tying up rigs, but you want something that's foolproof and gonna work for you and ready to go and have all your rigs the same length every single time, that's where a tidy boom comes in because that is ready to go and super, super strong. Next up, you need to get your chosen hook, which for most cases, a nice, curved shank, something with slightly large gape. Hook choice is down to personal preference, but I'm gonna be using a size four curved shank type hook for today. Super sharp, so try not to prick myself. And that's gonna be attached to the swivel one end, but to hold that in place, we need to use either shrink tube, or in this case, I'm gonna be using a little sleeve, a dedicated Ronnie rig sleeve, which makes it really easy for me to change the hook. If it dings at any point, I can change the hook nice and easily because these booms are gonna outlive a hook pretty much every single time. So there's my hook, but a couple of other things that we need for bait presentation is gonna be either a hook ring swivel with a screw or a micro hook ring swivel, which I'm gonna to use today. So I'm gonna be flossing on my baits. So get one of those out. Try not to drop it and hope bite doesn't happen anytime soon because otherwise this is all gonna go flying. I have had one already today, so it's not gonna be a blank, which is always nice when I'm out filming. So there we have my hook and then the hook ring swivel, which is what I'm gonna attach my bait on. So I'll slide that on first. And then I've also got a hook bead, which needs to follow on. These ones have a little board hole already, so it makes it nice and easy to slide them on. And that is what stops the hook ring swivel from flying off the hook, of course. So you can position this bead where you want, depending on where you want the pop-up to sit when it's actually in use. There we are, we have the swivel on and the bead on stopping that swivel from coming off. We're nearly there to be honest. Next up, this is where you would add a little bit of shrink tube into the hook, which will secure it onto the swivel. But in this case, as I said, I'm gonna be using a dedicated Ronnie rig sleeve so that I can change the hooks at any point. These actually slide over the eye of the hook quite easily. But if you find that you can't get your tube or anything over the eye, that goes on before the swivel and the bead. Just moisten the eye to make it a little bit easier. Push that on, and there we go. We have that little sleeve on the hook like so. This is when we now need to attach it to the swivel of the boom. Now this, again, is one of those debates, which way round do you have the swivel face? Do you have the eye in, or the gape in, or the gape out? I like to have the gape facing out. Just personal preference, I think if anything happened there, it's a little bit smoother on a fish's lip, although I really don't think it makes a difference. So it doesn't matter which way you hook that onto the hook and then slide the little sleeve down over the swivel 
or if you're using shrink tubing, that's where you'd slide the shrink tubing down and then use a lighter or steam to shrink it down. The only reason I'm using a sleeve like this is because, as I mentioned, if I caught a fish and that hook point dinged, or was fishing on a, a gravelly area and brought the hook in and it caught something, it dinked the hook, rather than having to cut the tubing off, which it's not the end of the world, I can just slide that sleeve back, take the hook off and all the beads and everything, put a new bead, or put the bead and hook ring swivel back on, sleeve on a new hook and hook back on and we're ready to go. I don't have to change the putty or anything, everything's good to go. That is pretty much the bulk of the rig done. Now we just need to add our hook bait because I've used a hook ring swivel, this one's gonna get flossed on, but if you've used a hook ring screw, that's where you just screw your baits on, which is often what I do. But just to make things a bit different, I'm gonna floss one on. Pretty simple, but if you've never flossed on a bait before, all you do is put your baiting needle through your chosen pop-up, thread the floss through the small eye on the hook ring swivel, Put it through till it's about halfway down the floss. Join the two bits together and pull it nice and tight. Then you just attach your hook bait as if you're adding it to a hair rig or something. Pull it through, pull all the floss through the bait, like so. And then just, I like to snug my hook baits just down onto the barrel of that swivel. Some people like to have it on the, the top eye of the swivel, but I like to have it snug down to the, bit, the barrel of the swivel so the eye is completely free to move around on that hook. It just looks neat and the mechanics of that swivel is still very much able to do its job. Trim that off, get a lighter, blob it down. There we go. That hook bait is now secured. This is where I can move that bead around just check how I want that pop-up to sit. So actually just at the top of the shank of the hook on the bend, that's pretty much perfect to have that pop-up sitting directly above the hook. But if I wanted to, I could move that bead down a bit so that the hook sort of hangs a little bit lower. Completely up to you, trial and error how you want to fish them. And how I've got that used with the little sleeve, I can also change the aggressiveness of where that exits the swivel. So that is the rig finished. The last thing to do if you're using a really buoyant pop-up and that's not weighty enough, get a little bit of putty. And again, just like when I was talking about the hinge stiff rig, where you put the putty is open to, interpret well, not interpretation, is open to personal preference, whether you put that round the swivel. As I said in the last one, I prefer to do it away from the swivel, so I let those swivel do their thing, let the mechanics work, and I add my putty around the fuse loop just before the swivel. So it's completely away from the swivels, let's not do its thing, but I've still got a weight there that pins all of it down. So there we have the Ronnie rig finished. Attach that to however you're going to fish. If you're using a lead clip, maybe attach that. Again, you just have to put a little tail rubber on to attach this to a lead clip setup or maybe a helicopter. Again, with a presentation like this, I'd probably most likely use it with a helicopter presentation just so it's got that flexibility and freedom to land exactly where it wants away from the lead. But as simple as that, I've got a Ronnie rig tied up, ready to go. And because these booms are all exactly the same when they come out of the packet, I can knock a few of these up in a few minutes and know that every single rig is identical. So if you found a platform or a rig or a setup that works for you, there's no little discrepancies between each rig you tie. They're always exactly the same. So that is the tidy booms from Gemini. This is the Ronnie with a spinner swivel to be specific. And again, this comes in at £4.9 or starting from £4.9p for a set of three available in either five and a half inch, seven inch or nine inch. For more information on these and all the other booms that are available, either make sure you subscribe to us to start with because we're doing a whole series on these once a month at the moment. Previous one was the Hinge Stiff. This is the Ronnie Rig and you'll have to stay tuned for what next month's is. But that is the Ronnie Rig done. Cheers for watching and I'll see you again soon.